Okay, we've got one hour time. Got a lot of crap, so of course it's gonna be some crazy stuff, but it's gonna come later. I wanna like it's really come to your attention. It's good that it's gonna be filmed because I want to make you understand truly what he did. Yeah. But for the advanced heel leg locker, it's gonna be maybe a bit boring. To start. Just let's check it out. So I mean, a heel lock is like. When you have dry branches and try to break them, a couple of them, but not like this, but like in this case. Yeah. And then later, let's say you have branches from a fresh living bush that are like bendy, so it's not going to work. So you have to bend them and twist them. Yeah. That's a pretty good enough right here. So they are, the one thing that everybody knows, or at least in theory knows, is like it's this twisting. Like this way, this way. Yeah. But the second thing that makes a difference is. Where is like this? Like here, if you let's say, yeah, this. There are cases where people get their leg broken with a straight leg, but it's super hard, so it's a bad way to do it. A bend is okay, but this is still a very natural position. So if it's like on steroids and strong, I'm gonna be like, you know, like, and maybe it's gonna work, but maybe not. But let's say this position is very unhealthy for him. I should even one arm just do like, and it probably will break him. The problem with this is I'm very close to him, so his hands are gonna reach me and annoy the fuck out of me, yeah. So I have to kind of always address that depending on the position. So those things are very important. And there's one more thing that's actually the most thing that breaks down this defensive structure, but people do it, even good people do it, but many people are not aware about this. Like the leg is like this, it gets already, look, his instinct already tells him like, no, I don't like this, I don't want this. So if I had him pinned in some solid position and move his leg a bit further and then start twisting it, it's much worse. Same goes for the other direction. If it's here and I start twisting it in either direction, it's gonna break much quicker, yeah? So those three things you're doing in all of those positions, that's like, for example, the backside 50-50 is very strong because these people usually do kick in, let's say, from the K-guard and they're like, like this, and you start heel hooking them. So no matter how strong they are, they're gonna get fucked up. Like, good example, ADCC, Muhammad Ali, this motherfucker, Lachman Giants, it's a completely different, like, like, our um, Giles here, if he heals, it would be the same, but this position is totally finish me, even though you're big. Like, keep that in mind first, yeah, and now let's start slowly. Um, still not fancy and cool and still the boring part, but it's important. Um, Okay. Not finishing people. There are many things you do. People, it's called heel hook. So, like in stand up, the hook, beginners are like. And then the real boxers, so they're like kind of barely moving the arm, just like the hip and everything else, the leg. And it's the same with the heel, actually. This is like the final thing that you do a little to do the last step if it's not enough before. But much more important is to, like, it's like, I like it to see it like loading the spring. That's back in the day, they would just always do the heel hook like this, no matter outside, inside. By the way, this applies for both heel hooks, but it's just one hour, so I'm gonna mostly work on the inside heel hook. Like a little bit different with the outside, but I'll leave you with the info and then you can play around in all kinds of heel hooks, yeah? So back in the day, this was always the thing, even this, like, and it, sometimes it would work, sometimes it would slip. Then they were like, okay, make it stronger, so load the spring more, and then they started doing it with this part. The exit grip doesn't matter, it can be like this, it can be like this. I'm gonna get more into detail about that later, because it has to do with friction also a lot. Same like the class yesterday, like connecting to his leg. Look, this looks like some fake shit, like, like a white belt trying a heel hook for the first time in his life, but actually this is not bad. I have a lot of connection, and I can actually submit somebody like this. Just like, like a principle idea. So I load the spring, and it's stronger than this because I have more. Then also use your body, twist it. Don't always do this because in some positions it's gonna be really hard to get there. Just move there without even doing this and then it's much easier to get it and also you're not heel hooking much with the arms now, you're doing it with your body, which is much stronger. Yeah? <laughs> like this. <laughs> um, yeah, if I accidentally do this and then... <laughs> um, then, like, People came up with the even stronger method of loading the spring even more. Like if you see, this is my like, this circle is where I 
try to tackle it. So how can I make it even more? Well, I transitioned to there. So that's why this thing came into existence. I think they call it our motor. It can be, it doesn't always have to look the same. Leave it up to you, which one you like the most. There's like many ways to do this. I'm gonna go more into detail what makes it strong later, because it's really just like, being a foot fit, just like, it's like it's mine. <laughs> no? So keep that in mind. You can try even the bad one just so you feel the difference, all of them. Yeah? And then, of course, you have to block him from going away. But that's like relative. Sometimes, if you're very fast, even this can be enough. It looks kind of weak, like if you spin out, but. The directionals, yeah. If I just keep turning, if you're gonna turn, he's gonna get down. Like, go back now, back away. But he's on the way. Like, remember I just said about where the position of the leg is? If somebody's not turning, I have to be away from his hands. That means I would have to do kind of this. If he starts turning, turn, you would have to get closer to him and might still finish him. Yeah. This is like you have to be very in the moment, in every position. I also leave it up to you, depending on your level, from which position you do it. I'll just show it mostly from the 50 because it's relatively simple. It can be also like a 90 fan or inside some kind of, I don't know, how do they call this, a crisscross or shin. Depends on your level, you can try it from everywhere. Pretty much applies also everywhere. Later we're gonna go into entries and how to like keep them close, how to get them there. Yeah. But for now, now just keep those things that I said, like the position of the leg and this thing. Like for example, here I have a basic heel, but I know, let's say he's a ADCC steroid fighter. I'm never gonna beat him here, so I try to. Here yeah, I just did this with his leg and made it a little bit weaker. That's also what causes the injuries in competition because he's like, I'm strong, I'm tough, I'm on steroids, and I try and he's seeing me like, I can take this, and then. It shifts a little, and he thinks like, okay, he's pulling, it's still the same position, and it's like, smile. Because also when you flex your leg, you don't feel so much. It's like, it's a strong defense until it's not anymore. That's why the really good leg loggers, if they mess up and end up in a deep heel, they actually start to rela relax completely, because then they have a few centimeters of slack. You know, even, it's easier to heel slip, but even if you're completely caught, if you flex, it's gonna break earlier than if you don't flex, I'm gonna have to, do like a couple centimeters more. And those couple centimeters make on world-class level a big difference. You know? But watch out with that, don't, don't take it too serious right now. <laughs> so just play around with this for a couple minutes, like keep in mind the position of his leg, like also don't defend, let your partner just try different, like try it from here, try it from here, try it from here, and ask him how it feels, which one of them feels strong, which one not. Also try it a bit like with not technical defense, but just like flexing. But be very, like if you're a beginner, don't do that. Just do it without, like just be a, a dummy basically. But if you have some hero leg lock experience, then try to like flex your leg a little. Me? Yeah. Then, then I actually have to, then it's not like I'm breaking paper, I'm actually breaking a body. So, so I feel when I'm weak and I feel when I'm strong and how I have to do it. Yeah? So for now, just start with this, okay? Just a couple of minutes. Let's go. So it was pretty much just one technique. Now, now I'm gonna get a bit more into detail. Um, of course, you need to be behind this knee line. That means if you see a line between my knees, they shouldn't be anywhere here. Like now, now I'm slightly behind it. Like now, this is like complete bullshit. <laughs> and here I'm like pretty far behind it, which is usually good. You don't necessarily always have to squeeze really hard. It's more like to, like if you're gonna wanna just finish fast and don't wanna bother much with technique, like catch it, but well, that's more like if you really advanced already and know that your position is right. Normally good technique is if you don't have to do this, like, and you see it like Gary Tonnen often sometimes, I was like, what the fuck is he doing? He completely opens up, he has something like this and finishes people. Because he just pins them, like that's all what you need, you need something to stop him from moving, not, not something to hold him. It's just like to stay there, but you want to finish. You want to stop him from taking away the pressure. So keep that in mind. It's pretty basic. And um, it's 
So soon we're gonna start on the actual grips. It's gonna maybe be a bit confusing for the beginners. We're gonna, we're gonna show a lot of grips, but I don't want you necessarily to do all those that I do. I just want you to understand why those grips are good. I mean, people often learn the technique, even this one that is stronger than the old school one, and they just think it's okay to take it like this and that's a good heel. But actually, if you look, it's not much. Can you see this tiny little bit of air between my wrists? And like, I can even look at you like here. <laughs> this is a, like a tiny flaw. I want it to be completely connected. And even if you see the position quite well, you may think, oh, this, this little bit of air there is not a problem. But it is. It makes it a bit weaker. And that's what they call the invisible jiu-jitsu. It's like such a small thing and people don't mention it, but it's important. I want to really, as if I have a symbiosis with your leg, I want to like ingest it almost, like you know, you want to make it mine. Yeah? And you need to figure out ways how to do that. For example, everybody is so much about the hands and arms. Yeah, sure, they pull his leg towards me, but also look, my thigh, it's squeezing against his leg and it's kind of trapping me there, which makes you feel like I'm crushing your leg even without submitting you. But this feeling is a very good situation to actually finish you. Yeah? Look, just by the way, now look exactly at the grips I'm, do, I'm doing and try some of them, but also maybe figure your own out. Yeah? Now, those I just showed already, this is the power book. I think Craig Jones developed it to fuck up uh, Vinnie Magalash and he broke his fucking shit. And fucking, it's insane. So it's very powerful. You can do it this way, you can do it that way, you can also do this way too. <laughs> 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 I don't know, I just love it. Um, in terms of breaking power, this might be really the strongest, but I love this one the most. It's almost as strong, and it has, like some people have very flat heels, then you always tend to slip, and even with the very tight entanglement, people still heel slip out of the shit. They, yeah, they do heel slip, like, like a ballerina, and then bam. But with this one, it's much higher, especially even if it's sweaty. You kind of, first of all, you're making like an artificial heel extension, which makes it his heel bigger. And then you kind of heel hook your own hand. And then you do this grip. Yeah. And when he tries to heel slip, it's much harder. It's not impossible, but it's a different world of control somehow than any kind of this thing. Yeah. So try this grip. Yes. And then you just try to finish and see how you do it. Then another thing with the flex leg, what I know you mentioned at the start. If he relaxes his leg because he's a world class, he's like Vinnie Magalash and he's like, ah, his leg locks don't work. And he knows that if his leg is relaxed, he, it needs longer for me to finish him. Well, then I will artificially force him to flex it by just pushing down. Now he cannot relax his leg. It's like, just the anatomy doesn't work like this. Now his knee, half, everything is flexed. The tendons are shortened. So. It's easier to finish him. Like it's like I'm putting on his defense, but I'm defeating it and finishing him. Yeah? Which is like this is kind of kind of sounds weird. Like on, on low, mid-level, even almost high-level people, this does not apply yet. But on the highest level, it does. Like I think Keenan once said, Metamorphosis he escaped it just by completely relaxing his leg. And his foot was almost facing this direction to knee this, but he's hyper flexible, so it worked for him. So you want to avoid this. You always want to give your opponent what he doesn't want. Yeah, if he wants the, the flexing method, you kind of want to extend and make it not so strong. If he, he wants to re relax his foot to give in and take the heel and hope that you can turn so far, then you go against it and make him flex it. Yeah? Also use the floor for this if you can. Of course, if I'm like this, there's no floor, so I have to actively kind of push here with this leg and push down with my arm. Yeah, which is a bit weaker. If I can use the floor, perfect. I just kind of bridge into my own arm, okay? And then his foot gets really, like, pushed really high up. I don't even need both hands for this. I can hand fight here and just bridge with you, Vina. And then, like I said, don't do too much with the hands. Use your hips, like, like an arm bar or a knee bar, yeah? And also don't flex the arm too early. It's always like, ah. Oh, but no, be as relaxed as possible until everything is in place and then flex the arm and it gets like crazy tight. Yeah? And try to have as much friction with the leg as possible. Right? For the advanced guys, try to actually finish your partner just with one arm. Look, I'm not doing this, I'm doing this because I'm closer connected to him. 
Huh? Then try this. And just feel. And then if you have your, if your both leg lockers try to resist a bit, then you're gonna see the difference. Also try the heel slip if you know what it is, if you're experienced enough. And you're gonna see this is hard to heel slip. This can work. You know? You just like this. This this thing. Yeah, of course, proper position. Yeah, leave it up to you, like I said, which position doesn't matter. 50 50 is usually easy to learn it from. So let's go, just a couple of minutes again. And then it's gonna start getting interesting. So this was pretty much very essential, now it gets interesting. Mm -hmm. And we need to practice it in a bit. Like, not in a wrong way, but in a slightly safer, not most hardcore way. But I'm going to show you what's this. Like, if you're both good leg lockers for any partners, you can actually go for the proper competition way. If I do it from top, many people, it's almost like his hip is an anchor, and I fall back and pull him out. But that's the, the most stupid thing. No matter if it's a straight heel, whatever it is, if I just go like this, yeah, I may finish him, but what I'm doing is actually pulling him up. And if he has some sense of defense, he will just get up and basically, I'll, I'll, if I don't finish him here, I have a lot of trouble. And it's also his task to make me fall that way. So every other direction is better for me. Yeah? A little bit better would be falling there. It just makes things more complicated. Even a bit better would be falling there. But now it gets dangerous. That's why, I mean, you, you can practice it the bad way because in the end, against the wood leg over, he's gonna make sure that it almost ends always that way. But you have to try everything to make it a bit more somewhere else. There, 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 but not there. So you can also do it like very carefully, but don't just fall. Also don't head pose. Like you can head pose, but if you do it, I have a strong neck. It's, look, it's almost thicker than my head, right? <laughs> if I do this during training 10 times, like, yeah? <laughs> If I flex my leg, I'm going to be fine, but I'm going to have a headache. If I just once forget to flex my head, and I might have trouble for a couple of weeks, I might have to even go to the hospital. So if you have those first shoulder pose, yeah, don't go like, ooh. Yeah, that's like, a, like an emergency thing. If you have a professional fight and the win, you get 10,000 euros, and then, then you can risk it. But even then, it's not so intelligent. Yeah, so do it very carefully if you drop anywhere there and try to, because the thing is, one arm is already busy be reversing the system here, because normally you go into position and then you hunt the heel, yeah? And that's not bad, but nowadays, like even Craig John says, if his trained partners only defend and he only does heel leg locks, they usually get out, so he switches up and does back takes and stuff, so this system, it's not wrong, it's super systematical, take position, chase the heels, but the defense is also super systematical, and people know it. But reversing it, first catching the heel and then getting the position is, seems amateur-like, but there are some really good professionals who do this. Like I mentioned yesterday, Miki Mutsumechi and uh, Mateo Shishinsky, they just catch the leg really nicely in very interesting ways and then slide around until they have the position. And we're gonna work on that, like this. Many people try this and fall back and, like, people heel slip out of tight position. So out of a loose position like this, they will always heel slip. So you need to, has a really good connection and there are a few things that help you to get that. First of all, just a lot of connection with his leg. You can grab here, but I can lift him, I can, even when I do it the gentle way, I can sit down kind of careful, you yeah. know? That's like a very basic way. But also, don't grab right in the knee, because if I have small hands, if I'm a bit weaker, and this happens, I might get my fingers. <laughs> it's really nasty, no, it's fine. I crack everywhere. So grab the calf, like, this, then it, nothing happens, you even get the tighter connection. Then there's another way, just fist in here. And this is really funny because he thinks I may have to do this, but no, I don't. I can just finish with both arms because this one is holding, now I'm kind of steering his whole shin out of his knee, you know? <laughs> yeah, sounds funny, but that's why it is. We don't even need to connect him, this, this is strong by itself, just as an example. So use the knee in terms of connecting more to him. Also, when I just said, his hip is not an anchor and it's not a chain, I don't want to pull it out. I want to balance on him as long as possible. Maybe you saw it on Instagram when Johnny Gripple fucked up some guy lately. They were here and I just saw the video. I'm like, why is he leaving his heel there? That's dangerous. And then it was like, 
Yeah? So you go here and like I said, you need much connection. This is not gonna be enough. This and look my thigh is pushing my hand even more into his leg. Now he's still free, he can spin, but I can yeah, I can if he spins try to kind of crush him, I can let go and go to the back and all that stuff. Just have to know that the only thing he can do if I don't fall or jump into position right away is go that way and then I can anticipate. But usually this is a very fast thing to do. Of course, this is the fastest, but it's also the shittiest. So try to find a compromise. The good one is this one. Yeah. Even if I'm like this, I can slide into position later. Yeah. But be careful when you drop yourself. Do it very slow. Look, even he's heavy, but I think maybe even heavier than me equally. But it's easy. I, I don't have to lift him. I'm just dragging him. I can really make it. <coughs> weird for him to defend because he's like, what the fuck is the guy doing? You just have to have a good hand, look even this. I prefer, this is my favorite, it doesn't have to be your favorite, but I really like this. Then there's a very unusual variation of this. It's very good as a standing entry. On the ground I wouldn't go for this one if I have another one, but yes. Look, from here it's for some reason perfect because I'm squeezing here, I'm squeezing here with the help of my leg. And like I said, try to balance on him, yeah? Like this, like this, just stay on top of him, but be careful. Like, no, it's pretty close and his leg is bent very far, so it's dangerous now already. That's why for today, don't do it too much in this direction, but that's the strongest, yeah? If I fall this way, even with um, barely any proper control, I just finish him because his leg is in a horrible position, yeah? Even sometimes those unusual things. I'm gonna get to that later. Yeah, so try to connect to him. Yeah, this way. Maybe even for starters, just to practice it, like, just carefully drop there. Yeah. And now it seems really weird for you to defend, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, keep your weight on him as long as you can. Yeah, if you want to, like, be hard or aggressive in a competition, you would actually fall to his head, because this is the most unhealthy position for his leg. Go like this and just like, ah. yeah, but don't, don't do this, it's really dangerous. Do this. Like this, same thing basically. Oh, I want to be fast. Because this makes it hard for him to heal slip. And don't forget to catch him. And then you can, you can also slide into other things like, and just be very careful when you go for it. This is like the most safest way to understand what you're doing here. You're just sitting down slowly. Yeah? So let's go. Try this. So I hope up until now you have learned a lot about heel hook principles. I hope you can integrate it, try it with everything outside, inside, all the positions. But now the cool, fun stuff comes. So this thing is also a leg drag. Yeah, in case I feel like something is off and he's about to escape, I just drop myself into leg drag. Okay. Leg drag means my foot close to his uh, knee hooking, because if I don't do this, might this happen and I have a lot of trouble. Not horrible, but from, from amazing, no danger to 50-50 danger, kind of. So you really need to be hooking here. Now your knee needs to drop here over his thigh, close. You need to have your weight on his thigh. In the gi, this is a held position. No gi, it's still not bad. Your elbow also connecting to your leg. It's kind of a case thing. You want it almost to the floor or somewhere here. I just like to kind of catch his thigh between my, uh, my thigh, my arm and my body. And then you kind of keep his butt basically as control. Um, the thing is now, I have a few nice uh, entries for heel hooks from here. One super unknown one that's kind of really nice if it works. It works especially well if this is a taller and longer person. So he's quite tall like me, so it does work. If he, if he was very small, short leg, then the last one is a bit harder. But just from here. Normally you can often pass from here. And if, because I'm pushing him down, his reaction is to kind of do this butterfly movement. He wants this to escape. But it's almost not possible if I really put my weight onto him. But the moment I relieve this, he will, it's just natural. I let him go, so he's like, oh, okay, I'm free. So he will always lift it a little at least, yeah? And even if he doesn't here, it's enough space for one arm. And if I have this arm here, I can already do this. And now it's getting interesting. Like, 
Even falling back is an okay heel hook, but I can also pull this leg behind him. And now it's super shitty for him. This is like the other class I taught, the, the, the belly down back step. Like you just stay like a tripod, feet together. Two point here, one point here. Can be also cropped, but I like this together. Not behind this leg, this would be not so good. I have to stay behind this knee, but not pinching, because then I have no balance. Yeah, then it's a bit tricky. You have to be like a proper triangle then, you go through your arms and your head. Yeah, and then there's uh, many ways to heal hook here. Yeah. Even surprise him with the quick knee bar. Yeah. Oh, just by the way, like a little extra. Yeah, but just mainly the idea is for this one to get, you can also try this and then do it. So just be aware of that arm. If that arm is waiting here, yeah, that, that's completely different. But if it's waiting here, and I do this, I set myself up for a lot of bullshit. Not even horrible, do it. If I react quick, shit continues and it's not good for him. But if I don't react, I'm fine. So be aware of that arm. Gi and Nogi the same. This arm is always the problem. I fight it. Yeah, some people have a really cool way of uh, actually going for an arm bar here. That's a different class again. Yeah, but just don't ignore the sound because it causes trouble. Usually it's busy pushing me away, which is good because then there's space here to do this thing. Yeah, but I usually do first the arm here and then this. And normally if he's aware of leg he's gonna go apeshit crazy. So I just stay first and see what I can do and how can I can get to the finish or just keep, at least keep my position. So that's one nice thing to do. And the other thing, which mostly nobody sees coming, I have to switch my positioning a bit for that, like not anymore foot at the knee and weight on him, but foot goes to his hip and my weight goes off of him. If he weirdly pushes this leg into the floor, it can fail, but there's another move that I'm also going to show for that. But normally once I take my weight off from him, he will always, like this leg will get light because he's like, oh, I'm free. You just do this and pull him in here. Here. Also, Stronger heel, all kinds of heels. All kinds of weird shit. Just as much connection as possible. Yeah. Now let's go through the case that I do this. Like if you can, first right here before you drop your butt, if you get under, but you don't have the time to spend a lot of time like grabbing it, then he will notice something is up. You just and you have your weight on him, take it off and grab. Yeah, this was almost like almost too slow. But if it happens like this, that I'm too slow and he gets like cannot lift it, I don't spend time like oh, I want it, I want it. He's just gonna know what's gonna come. So instead, go up and do a slicer. And if the slicer fails, I pass. If he has like me or rubber legs and you just slip out. Yeah, it's a thing. Like you go for this type of slicer and like do and then just his leg slides up and I still pass. Yeah. So one more time I'm here. Step like I take I have to actively move my foot from his knee to his hip and really do a far step back and sometimes it works if I grab the leg here. Ideally I want to be like underneath. And if he's lighter I can just pull him in. If he's heavier I pull myself to him. Yeah and also this look don't just Ignore this little advantage that I made for myself. Yeah, this forces his leg to be bent. Switch it with this one. Forces his leg to be bent. Makes it easier for me to reach this here. And then I don't even have to pull this one out to get the grip. This is one more chance for him to escape. Yeah. Okay? Then let's try. That's pretty much all I wanted to show. Like now you actually have to go into half guard. Now just just a little fun thing, especially because it's ready to go to top half guard. Top half away to top half guard, just not half guard. Yeah. And you know what we did with Eddie? I'm just stuff. Yeah, pretty much a shittier version of it. Here, there's a funny thing. I know it's ridiculous, but this is not an awesome great submission, but. People will be like, that's bullshit, that's never gonna work. And well, then that's a problem. Then it turns into a good thing. Yeah, just from, from this kiss of the dragon situation. Even, you can even corkscrew it. Yeah. You can heel hook. But uh, if he's strong, you need the power hook. 
Yeah, the, the normal one is not going to be enough. You're going to slip into this thing here. Yeah, just like a little thing to show you the possibilities. Yeah. It's endless. So that's all, just because he did this class and I thought it's a cool thing to annoy the people who learned his moves well. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, like uh, adding insult to injury. You go through the other side, <laughs> exclamation mark. But actually I do the, the, this thing all the time that he taught, so it's a really great move. So amazing actually. People forget about it because it's old, but it's just the brand new sledges. So any questions? Anything? Want me maybe teach me some new move or something, some improvement for the class? <laughs> Okay, now, yeah? Question? Um, it's, you mean, my, that I do this, when I heal people, it can be useful for a moment, like, just a little general reminder, like, the longer I squeeze, the more I get tired. Like, it's not like, you go like, it's like, and then it works. If it doesn't work, I do, instead of keep squeezing, I have to change something. Open up, maybe change my angles with something else. Yeah, the, this constant squeezing is going to make you tired, it's especially against a good leg locker because you don't finish them fast. You have to be, there should be squeeze, but technical squeeze. For example, if you want to squeeze, if you want to keep him, do it with the help of the ground. Like, for example, this, and I, I, I slide towards him, my foot is pinned to the ground, and I'm pushing against my foot, and it feels like I'm crushing his thigh. Well, this just feels like stressful, but not half as strong. So use the floor, just like use it for the finish. Yeah. So squeeze is nice if you can do it technical. If you can't, then try to make it mechanical. Then yeah, that's better. Okay. So that's it. I hope you liked it. <laughs>